maybe we're all wrong and biased and conservatives are actually hilarious and liberals just don't find them funny. So do you remember Newton's law? Not that Newton, this Newton. Not that Newton, this Newton. There we go, whew, that went over really well. <laughs> Isaac Newton once said that for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction, meaning much like my nightly massage therapist, forces always come in pairs. Nope, it's not that. Objectively speaking, that was very bad comedy. That is, of course, Gutfeld and his opening jokes pointing out that several things are, in fact, named Newton. Followed by the line, and I'm going to directly quote him here, much like my nightly massage therapists, forces always come in pairs as a punchline intro to a segment. And it's okay if you didn't fully understand what he said just then, because his delivery reads like someone who just learned what words are. That's definitely his first problem. See, what Gutfeld has there is a throwaway joke meant to bridge two subjects, something you would want to say naturally and fast that isn't hard to understand, like when I'm thanking my two massage therapists for their hard work. He's doing a casual simile, where the twist is that what you're comparing says something absurd about yourself. An actual example of this structure would be saying something like, comedy is about tone and texture, something that, much like my weird smooth balls, Greg Gutfeld lacks. The joke is that I have weird, smooth, pale little boy testicles, you see. And by setting up a comparison between Greg Gutfeld and my balls, I could further elaborate by saying something like, and also like my weird balls, Greg Gutfeld is empty inside, and so on. Look, it's not perfect, but my point is that I'm giving your brain something that's easy to digest. Like my weird balls! The problem with Gutfeld's joke is that he wanted to land on the phrase, forces always come in pairs. So the natural joke writing instinct would be to take one of the words and give it a double meaning, something like, much like a Sith and apprentice, forces always come in pairs. Or perhaps, much like a fruit fetishist, forces always come in pairs. See? Words are neat. But Greg actually does the opposite of this, creating a simile that makes your brain have to work backwards to understand it. A massage therapist, when doing a massage, presses and rubs on muscles that a fucking alien might perhaps define as a force. He's saying his massage, or his force, comes in pairs, like his nightly massage therapists. So what he's ultimately saying is just, I get a massage from two people every night as his ultimate joke. And that's the ending problem, which is that the final observation being made isn't creative or absurd or funny or an observation or unexpected, but rather confusing. Why do you have two? So your brain is left searching for something it might have missed, and you find yourself repeating the joke in your mind several times to understand it, ultimately getting disappointed at the result. I probably didn't need to break it down that much, but I wanted to, because I wanted to explain why it's fundamentally bad. Gutfeld is a fundamentally bad comedian, made worse by his weird, cruel confidence and that weird, like, half tone he's doing where he starts up here and then kinda eats the rest of it. He's doing, like, Colbert or something? I don't know. Not to mention that this whole segment turns out to be about how he's going to buy a gun because he's scared of crime and how we should all be scared too because the Democrats are planning to destroy the country by purposefully allowing crime? Law-abiding people actually will abide by the laws that are made, and criminals, they won't. They're criminals. So today's lawmakers just make it easier for themselves by making shoplifting and retail theft, car chases, and assault unworthy of arrest. It's all part of a greater mission to remake society into something new by destroying it first. And what does that do? Well, Newton also said, what goes up must come down. The more the Dems and the media try to reduce your security, it's up to the rest of us to enhance it. At this rate, by 2022, we'll all be driving tanks. And this is probably the larger issue, which is that political comedy often works best when it's pointing out a truth of some kind. And while there are a lot of harsh truths to be said about Democrats, they aren't, you know, purposefully trying to make crime legal. So it just feels like weird fear-mongering slam poetry. There's no teeth to his comedy because his message is curated propaganda from one political perspective. 
This isn't exclusive to the right, but any niche group pushing a political agenda. An example from the left would be something like, like the subreddit Toilet Paper USA, a place where people like to blow off steam about grifters like Charlie Kirk and Ben Shapiro. I get it, believe me. But one of the things they like to do is Photoshop like almost believable but fake tweets from these people, which is frustrating when there are perfectly real tweets you could actually mock. So it just feels like wish fulfillment. And it's why a lot of Trump parodies fell short, because they just boiled down to pointing out stuff about him we don't like but exaggerated. Remember the president show. What is it, kid? Who are they? They are incredible real estate guys who owned Studio 54, and that's a place where you could do anything. <laughs> yeah, what the heck is wrong? No. Fake no. children. We are not Fake children. Fake children. Fake children. Fake. Fake children. Play with the kids? Yeah, they're fun. What's fun about them? Pushing aside the talent of the performers or writers, why would we need or want a show like that? It's all pandering, lowest hanging fruit, which is great if you like coming inside of pairs, but not cutting edge when it comes to comedy. It's not exclusive to the right, but the right seems to do it almost exclusively. And we'll definitely get more into what Trump specifically did to comedy, but I need to talk about Gutfeld a little bit more. Yeah, Gutfeld! Gary, get the fuck out of here. Why are you still here? I'll talk to you later. Aww. Now, I don't want people to think that Gutfeld is going to be my only example of conservative comedy. But the reason we need to talk about this wet sack of oats is that he's apparently getting higher ratings than any other late night talk show host. And that seems like some Twilight Zone shit, right? Is our entire premise to this video wrong? Is conservative comedy actually extremely popular and good? Or perhaps is it that Fox News in general gets higher ratings than any other news station? Not because it's the most popular, but rather because it's the only right-leaning cable source. So of course, everyone right-leaning will flock to them, whereas centrist or left-leaning viewers have a larger spread of options. But again, I would argue that all late night is toothless, pandering often to liberals, but the likes of Colbert and Kimmel at least have clear jokes. Good jokes? That's extremely debatable. But this is how low we're making the bar in this episode. We're not judging the quality of jokes, just that they're able to competently make them. Hey, thanks for watching that clip. Here's the evergreen end plate to ask you to like and subscribe. It's any day of the year where you are.